The use of elastics in conjunction with orthodontic aligner treatment is common and can be an essential addition to some treatment plans to increase the predictability and efficiency of certain movements and optimize anchorage. Elastics are of different types depending on where they attach and what they're used for. In this video, we will go through some of the most commonly used types of elastics with Eon aligners. You can specify if you plan on using any type of elastics by filling the elastics module when submitting the case, or you can leave it to Eon treatment planning team to add it within the plan whenever deemed necessary. Now, let's dive a bit deeper into how the elastics attach to teeth and aligners. It's recommended to use 3 16 medium bands but different sizes can be used depending on your clinical judgment. Elastic bands are attached into the aligner system by two methods. One, precision cuts in the aligners themselves, which are cuts that leave edges for the elastics to be hatched on, or the more anterior area that we need elastics to exert force on. Two, cutouts in the aligners that allow prefabricated buttons to be bonded to the teeth surface, usually on the buccal or palatal surfaces of more posterior teeth. Buttons that are placed on teeth surfaces can be metal or ceramic, based on the doctor's own preference. Let's move on to show how buttons are cemented. You can cement them either with the aligners on or off, depending on your preference. In the demonstration here, we will have the aligners on from the beginning of the process. Of course, you will start by properly isolating the tooth. Apply acid etch only where the button will be cemented so that the excess removal will be easier. Let it sit on the tooth for 30 seconds and then wash it. Dry the tooth until it appears chalky. Add a layer of bonding agent. Cure it as per the manufacturer's instructions. Apply a layer of composite on the button. Place it on the tooth. Remove any excess. And finally, cure it for the prescribed amount of time. If the button is to be cemented on a crown, use hydrofluoric acid to etch the crown and silane coupling agent for bonding. Class II intermaxillary elastics. They are used for correction of class II cases with retraction of the upper teeth, or in a case where mesialization of lower posterior teeth is needed, and for correction of midline shift. A button will be placed on the lower molar and a precision cut on the upper canine. Take the band and start from the button and stretch it to attach it to the precision cut. Class 3 Intermaxillary Elastics. They're used to aid in the correction of Class 3 cases where you are retracting the lower teeth. Also in cases where mesialization of upper posterior teeth is needed also in the correction of the midline shift. A button will be placed on the upper molar and a precision cut on the lower canine. Take the band and start from the button and stretch it to attach it to the precision cut. Cross intermaxillary elastics. They're used to facilitate the correction of posterior cross bites of single or multiple teeth. In this demonstration, we represented how the elastics would be applied if we had multiple teeth in crossbite. The buttons are placed on the buccal surface of the lower first premolar and molar and on the palatal surface of the upper first premolar and molar. Start by placing the band on the palatal buttons of the upper teeth. Then stretch to attach it to the buccal buttons of the lower teeth. Box intermaxillary elastics are used to settle a posterior open bite and correct occlusal canting by extruding posterior teeth. In this example here, we have buttons bonded to the buccal surfaces of the lower first premolar and molar and on upper first premolars and molars. Start with attaching the band to the first premolars, then to the molars, or however you find it easy for you. 
Triangular intermaxillary elastics are used to aid in the extrusion of a single tooth that needs extra anchorage to align, for example, a high canine. Buttons are placed on the lower first premolar, lower canine, and upper canine. Start by attaching the band to the upper canine and then stretch it to attach it to the lower buttons. Bootstrap elastics. This type of elastics is used to extrude a single tooth against the aligner. For example, extrusion of an upper lateral that is not tracking well. Buttons are placed on the buccal and palatal surfaces of the tooth to be extruded. Attach the band to the palatal button first, then stretch it to the labial button. Rotational elastics aid in derotation of a severely rotated tooth. In this example here, we demonstrated the elastics to derotate the lower second premolar. Buttons are placed on the buccal and palatal surfaces of the rotated tooth, and buttons are placed on the adjacent teeth, depending on the needed movement. So, let's say that the second premolar is rotated mesia buccally. Buttons are placed on the buccal surfaces of the second premolar and the first molar also on the lingual surfaces of the second premolar and first premolar. Attach a band on the lingual buttons and a different band on the buccal buttons. Now we'll guide you through some important instructions to give your patient. Train your patient on how to wear the aligners. They can wear the elastics after placing the aligners in, especially if buttons are being used. However, if there are precision cuts, patients can attach the elastic bands to the cuts beforehand, then proceed to wear the aligners and attach the other end to the button. Instruct your patients to use the elastic bands most of the time for an adequate application of forces. Patients should ideally use new elastic bands every day unless the case requires otherwise.